All y'all scrutinize this very close. I am not OJ Simpson. You're not going to win this one. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? How am I in a position where I have to pray to see my children? But I'm going to use this platform and explain to you exactly what I And y'all know that this is what I'm dealing with. The, the press, they can't spin it. And I'm not, I'm not going to let up until I have the control of how my black children, how my children and the content and the surroundings, the, the just the influence on my, on my boys and all that. It's just, I'm not playing with that. And before we go to an actual court, I'm coming to the court of public opinion since that's where they exist after the divorce. Yes, indeed. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. Today, we have a lot that we need to discuss. We need to catch up. But today in particular, we are honing in on the number one. I did win the Baltimore Media Impact Award. So shout out to my city for recognizing me and my YouTube channel for being the YouTube channel, the most impactful YouTube channel of 2021. So I really appreciate that. And shout out to all the people who have been supporting me and sending me uplifting messages and energy. Y'all are the real MVPs. And it feels great to have all of that encouraging and motivational energy come back around from sober because I, I put out a lot of that stuff. But nonetheless, come on in. I know y'all are loading in. Share this video on Twitter so that we can connect. I'll retweet and follow you there. And also share it via text message and Facebook. We have Kanye. OK, we need to talk about Kanye West, his recent shenanigans and his antics. I think that he has his antics down to a science. And I've been studying him long enough to feel like I have his antics that he has down to a science, down to a science and how he is able to garner maximum press and headlines when it is that he pops up and says something because he does something or a few things systematically all the time. Now, if you really want to get caught up on the latest of late antics from Kanye West, how and why he got suspended or put in 24-hour Instagram jail, I did upload a video earlier today. So check down below in the description box and or subscribe, hit the notification bell and check out that video because it is a bit of a deep dive. I was able to utilize Kanye West and the racial slur that he hurled at Trevor Noah and use that to create a dialogue about that word, how it pertains to the Black community and the difference between its origin, how it was used and applied then, and how it is used and interpreted now. So that was a really good video that really dug into some of the historical context of that word. So check that out. I'll put a lot of hard work into editing that video. And shout out to the new members who are joining the channel right now. Thank you, Atmos, and thank you, C. Parker. I appreciate y'all, okay? So as y'all are loading in, as you are hitting, okay, that like button, as you are excited to see your girl, the plaintiff's Jane, back in action, let's get into something. Okay, first things first, I want to um, talk about, obviously, right, Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, Skeet Davidson, right? We call him Skeet because Kanye definitely changed that man's name and we abided by it because it's, 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 it's sticky, it's stuck. <laughs> and they literally won't let us out this group chat. So Kim and Kanye, they continue to feud and their dysfunctional co-parenting dynamic, it continues to play out in social media. We can't escape it. We can't scroll two or three times on Instagram or on Twitter without seeing something that Kanye is doing or how Kim Kardashian or the other people he's attacking, how they are reacting to what he puts out there. So on March 13th, Kanye West put out a series of rants. He rants in a lot of different ways, but his video rants are really something else because you're able to see him in real time and really monitor his attention span and his erratic behavior. Now, I uploaded a video. If you haven't caught up on part one, make sure you catch up on all the videos and all of the video rants, the posts that he did on March the 13th. You know, he posts and deletes those things. So I went ahead and I archived them and gave you some commentary and presented 
what Kanye said in that previous video, and it is linked down below. What we're getting into today, though, is a deleted video, okay? This is an unseen video. I've literally been searching for it the last two days. Today's the 17th. This happened on March the 13th, right? And there's this video where Kanye West is talking about a plethora of different things. Of course, they really don't relate to one another. It's, it's very incoherent. However, he is literally saying, I... I am not OJ Simpson. And he says some other things and it's interesting. No one has this video. The reason why no one has this video is because the video is five minutes long. It was only on his profile for 20 seconds and it was quickly snatched off of his page. So I really want to talk about this video and really dissect it and talk about what I noticed, some of the inconsistencies within what Kanye is telling us. Either he's lying, either he's adding sauce. And then I found something else within the post and what he seems to be condemning uh, North for either having or wearing or condemning Kim for allowing North to wear these things. So listen, you know, we got a lot to get into. Kanye West is also blaming Hulu for the divorce. And we're going to get into all of these receipts, this video, break it down and tell you how I feel and how I don't feel, okay, about and towards Kanye West. So without further ado, listen, y'all. Let's get into this syrup. I missed y'all. I really did. The following video is broadcasting live. And thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. Well, first and foremost, shout out to everybody in the live chat. I appreciate each and every one of you. I know I got a, a couple of new subscribers. I just want to thank each and every one of y'all. Hope that you've had some time to tackle your own invisible problems. Kanye West, in trying to follow what he's saying and what he's doing, it will give you a headache. You will lose some brain cells. And you ain't got no business dibbling and dabbling into what Kanye's got going on, what other celebrities got going on, unless you tackle your own spiritual warfare and whatever is affecting you in your world, whether you can see it or not. That's what I call invisible problems. If you ain't quite feeling it right, this stream is going to help you kick back, decompress a little bit. Just pay your fare and hit thumbs up on the video, okay? It's free 99. And y'all know before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But don't forget to think critically and independently regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Let's get into this. It's been so long since I've seen y'all. And I hope that you've been doing well and taking care of your mental health. Lord knows I had to take a step back and make sure my mind was in the right Place. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. All right, so check it. The first order of business is not to stray too far from the topic, right? But I got it. Ah, black news. I find it to be really interesting that Tyler Perry set up straight. I mean, his posture was, was straight up and down, okay? For 50 cents. Tyler Perry set up straight immediately, got Tyler Perry in check. And does anybody else find it to be a little strange that all of a sudden Tyler Perry has some nice things to say about Monique and her career. And now he's denying doing some of the very things that we've heard several other people vouch for him actually doing. Some, something's not right in the buttermilk. But if you haven't already checked out the video that I did, I did a live stream on that, I think the morning before yesterday. So check that out. I did a little bit of a deep dive into what's happening with Monique, Oprah, Tyler Perry, and 50 Cent. There's some noble things going on, but there's also some dirty stuff going on because everything's not making sense. So be sure to check that out as well. It is on the channel. Let's get right into Kanye West. One of the first things that I found to be, where do you start? Because everything's very odd with the way Kanye West is presenting himself and the things that he is saying. Um, and thank you so much, It Talks Baby Girl, for joining the channel membership. I appreciate that. One of the things that I found to be really weird is that Kanye West is blaming, okay? He is blaming this divorce, this failed marriage on Hulu. Let's take a look at what we're saying, right? This is one of those posts from the 13th and the 14th. They run together. He had a lot to say on those two days. So Kanye West says in this caption, along with this picture, right before the Hulu trailer dropped, Kanye says, I'm the bad guy. Kim's not a bad person. Kids want partners to stay together, but Hulu needed a new narrative. 
so Kanye, you're blaming the fact that you and Kim split up on the fact that Hulu didn't do what the kids wanted. So I guess the kids wanted mommy and daddy to stay together, right? That's a typical desire for any person, even over the age of 10, but all your kids are under 10 years old. You, you, you laid down and allowed yourself to go buck wild and release inside of a Kim Kardashian four times. And we're supposed to feel bad all of a sudden for you struggling to take back the culture that you lended to them. You gave Kim exactly what her culture vulture ass wanted. You gave her a proximity to blackness and you're upset that you can't revoke that card as easily as you dished it out. But you are saying that Hulu needed a new narrative despite the fact that kids want the parents to stay together. Too bad kids don't make the decisions about what is happening and, and keeping a toxic couple together. Y'all are toxic apart. I know that y'all are toxic together, but nonetheless, Kanye West really, really needs to get some help. Okay. Um, Again, some of the inconsistencies within what Kanye West is telling us, like I said, he's making it seem like, now mind you, he puts in quotation marks allowed, right? He says, oh, I'm allowed to see my kids. We get into this next post, right? This is him responding to a post in the caption he had posted earlier. So he posts a picture of these three pins on the back of North's backpack. So let's read the initial caption. It says, this was on my daughter's backpack when I was, quote unquote, allowed to see her last week. This is why I go so hard for my family. I'm wired to protect my family at all costs as the priest of my home. Don't worry, Northy. God is still alive. And I mean, you would think if someone's saying, don't worry, God is still alive. Are you thinking that they think God is dead? A lot of people, myself included, I posted this on a community tab. Make sure y'all check that out. Kanye West was enraged by this, right? And the only thing that I find that, that would make me kind of not, I wouldn't even say as much as enraged because if I left me getting worked up that Kim and Kanye, baby, I'd be worked up every day. But I can say that it was a little shocking right? That this is North's backpack. And obviously her father's on the right. Obviously there's an alien in the middle and to the left. That's supposed to be Kim Kardashian. I think that that's pretty goddamn dark to be Kim Kardashian. I thought that that was Cardi B. <laughs> I thought it was Cardi B. So I'm like, okay, well, what you really got an issue with? It seems like he has an issue with the alien pin in the middle, but the question is why? Why do you have an issue with North wearing an alien pin is it not okay for kids to kind of like be curious about aliens i my curiosity about aliens began at a very young age and i still am very much um enthralled by alien information it's just like a phenomenon to me but nonetheless some people were saying that the aliens are idol tree, a form of idol tree in a Christian home. It represents the devil. There's a lot of different theories. Some people felt like the alien actually represented how uh, North is feeling about Skeet or Pete Davidson being, you know, in the home. We don't know. Kanye West didn't show his work. However, what I can say is y'all see this on Kanye West's phone? This, this, this wasn't that long ago. Let me take my banner and my cash app off the screen. Kanye West is wearing an alien too. And the only difference between these two aliens is one's green and one's blue. Let's also bring into the conversation how this was recent. <laughs> you see Kanye West got on them fisherman boots up to his knees. <laughs> this wasn't even that long ago. So how come you can have an alien pin or a sticker alien paraphernalia, but North can't? But let's get to the point of this, right? This is the post. Kanye West says in this caption, this is the post where I was bashed for tell me how to be the best dad when the mom is trying to shit on you after not letting you see your kids. And I love how I have no celebrity quote unquote friends that will speak up on my behalf. Y'all just watching. Okay, cool. Kanye, are we trying to guilt trip our celebrity friends or acquaintances into vouching for us because we find the court of public opinion to be more uh, impactful, right? Based on whatever the hell we're trying to achieve, which it seems to be nothing but attention and bad press for her while you look like the innocent guy. You guilting your friends into speaking up for you because what, what is that really going to do to solve your problems? 
your friends chiming in or, you know, the game or Soldier Boy as right now they are advocating for you. How is that really going to solve whatever is causing the disconnect between the light and the bulb in your mind? Because the mall is open, but ain't nobody shopping upstairs in Kanye West's head. This is how we know that he values the court of public opinion more than anything else. Because in this deleted video, this video that was only on his page for 20 seconds and they snatched it down so fast, Jason Lee, I see you. He talks about the court of public opinion and why he places one, the court of law or the public opinion above the court of law. Let's listen. But I'm gonna use this platform and explain to you exactly what I, and y'all know that this is what I'm dealing with. The, the press, they can't spin it. Tracy, Chris, all y'all scrutinize this very close. I am not OJ Simpson. You're not gonna win this one. And I'm not, I'm not gonna let up until I have the control of how my black children, I'm not playing with that. And before we go to an actual court, I'm coming to the court of public opinion since that's where they exist after the divorce. Yeah, you know, so a lot of this is in our business. Like, we're tired of being in his business. The fact is Kanye West wants us to be in his business so that we can drag Kim Kardashian for him. And I'm so sorry, that's not really our fight. Like, Kanye loves to victimize himself, like, just all day and night. So let's get into some points, right, that I have and how I feel about this Kanye situation. Uh, you know, it takes a lot to follow behind him and capture every goddamn on post, every upload, every caption. Because, again, sometimes he posts stuff for 20 seconds, two minutes, and deletes it. Somehow, I end up tracking just about all of it down, okay? So, I'm not moved. I am so not moved by Kanye and him presenting himself as somebody that needs to be saved from the effect of the Kardashians. Because did we not warn him? Did we not warn Kanye West that this was going to happen? As a matter of fact, we warned Kanye and Kim. Kim, you sure you want these problems? Okay, black men are, are uh, it's cool to fetishize a black man if you're not a part of the black community and to imagine what type of BBC you gonna get to enjoy and what type of you know proximity to the culture and the urban and, and blah, 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 blah. Like, it's, it's cool to have all that clout. But when you really have to deal with the lack of emotional intelligence or maturity or, you know, really just the, the, the weaknesses, right? And I'm not painting a black man as weak, but there are some similarities in black men that just are not emotionally astute. Black men sometimes have a problem with addressing their feelings and channeling them properly and getting it all out. They either feel like they got to hold it all in and they can't cry or their emotions are so misplaced and they push it off and emotionally dump on everybody else. And that is what Kanye West does. He emotionally dumps to the people around him or the people who are willing to listen or to the internet in which he has a lot of control. Kanye West has a lot of control over the media. And I'm going to get into just how calculated he is about that a bit later on. But, you know, for him to be coming out saying, I am not OJ, like what, 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 deal? what did OJ have to do with it? Well, OJ sitting over there wondering how he got in. Because then why am I in it? And you could have did it. See, so, I get I wrong did it wrong. You never apologize. OJ was on trial for murder. Okay, killing a white woman and a man. You are going through a divorce. And I mean, e even if we talk about another correlation outside of a, a murder trial and a divorce or just meeting up, I mean, even him calling Trevor Noah what he called him, it, if he if Trevor Noah really is a coon, is the pot calling the kettle black? I, I don't really see any of Trevor Noah's moves as being raccoonish, but Kanye. Hmm. So if you're calling OJ a raccoon, how come you look in the mirror and you don't see one either? <laughs> Woo. But like I said, this is the reason why I'm concerned, but I'm not moved by Kanye because he is manipulative. Someone who emotionally dumps on you is and, and relies on trauma bonding in order to relate to you. But that's the only time he cares to 
relate to you is when he has a problem and he feel like somebody else does too, he wants to use that. But outside of Kanye ranting and emotionally dumping on us black people, he ain't relating to us. He's not speaking out about the issues that affect black and brown and marginalized people. And that's the issue that I have. Kanye West, he is a, uh, a victim over and over again. He positions himself as a victim. And in fact, Kanye West has made a pattern out of wearing victimhood as this hip, cool, brave thing to do. He's like a trend setting victim, you know, and one thing that really does not move me is somebody who was trying to play the victim and the victor at the same time. It just don't work. Like, how are you playing? Oh, I'm big. I'm bad. I got all the control, but I'm a victim of all these things, too. I'm a victor because I'm winning over top of this person. But I also want you to see how this person is, you know, responsible for making me lose and giving me these disadvantages. And I need y'all to help me. And what Kanye West wants is for us to drag Kim Kardashian. Why? Because we've done it so many times before based off of her behavior, even outside of Kanye West. Now he wants us to refer to her and drag her for being a culture vulture slut. Let's keep it above. I'm just being blunt. I'm just trying to save words, right? The only reason Kim uh, Kanye West continues to bring up the sex tape is for what? Because the whole time he's been married to Kim Kardashian, he's never once mentioned or tried to keep at the forefront Kim's prior dealings with Ray J in that tape and all that was on it. Ray J confirmed that Kanye's story about part two of the sex tape was a lie. So he keeps bringing up the sex tape and he, he's going to bring it up in this, you know, this unseen footage that we're going to watch. He keeps bringing this up because he wants us to call her a hoe that steals the black culture. It's, did she spread it wide and does she consistently steal from the culture? Yes. But you handed that to her, Kanye. Another thing that Kanye has admitted across several different videos, I gave her the culture. I made them cool. And then he's saying, I'm going to set up camp. And before I go to the court of law, I'm going to go to the court of public opinion because that's where they exist after divorce. Kanye West, them Kardashians been existing on social media way before the divorce. But you are strategically messy. And I'm going to get into that in a second. So, like I said, him him really saying he knows what he's doing. Is he a little ill? Does he need help? Yes. But two things can be true at one time. You can be mentally ill. You can need, uh, you know, just, just an evaluation and to address your mental health and also be strategically manipulative at the same time. Like I said, newsflash, Kanye, the Kardashians have always existed on social media and on Instagram. And as a matter of fact, that's where you met them. Kanye West be giving off a lot of, of bitter baby mama energy. Period, point blank. But I'm going to use this platform and explain to you exactly what I, and y'all know that this is what I'm dealing with. The, the press, they can't spin it. Tracy, Chris, all y'all scrutinize this very close. I am not OJ Simpson. You're not going to win this one. And I'm not, I'm not going to let up until I have the control of how my black children. I'm not playing with that. And before we go to an actual court, I'm coming to the court of public opinion since that's where they exist after the divorce. So you're trying to use us as your attack dog, right? Like that's what you want us to do. We told you she was going to give you a headache, but that's your preference. That's your exotical preference we told kim that you were going to give her a headache both of y'all decided to march straight towards the fire and you can't wrap your mind around the fact that she's over you she's moved on and she's she 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 can get clout from other people and <laughs> you'd have made her go back to non-blacks what kim got that what pull up in the street long. kim has been obsessed right her family has been obsessed with black men for an eternity as long as they've existed they've been fetishizing black men and you drove her so much up the water she's like you know what forget this i don't even need to steal no more culture i need to... okay make it make sense here's my thing about you kanye west you are very strategic and you always have been and it may have worked for you and you might have needed this skill to be able to disrupt the regular or 
established order, a way of thinking. He's very skilled at being able to inconvenience people and systems in order to make a point. I mean, ultimately, anybody that's going to be successful and innovative in an industry that's so much larger than them, Kanye West within music, Kanye West within entertainment, you've got to be bold and you've got to honestly buck up against a lot of the established, you know, the consensus that we go by. And again, that may have worked for him when it came to making music in his career, but when it comes to his mental health, when it comes to his marriage, and when it comes to trying to orchestrate the public to attack the people that you don't like, it doesn't work the same. And he's simply not over the fact that Kim Kardashian don't want to be with him anymore. Kanye West is very tactful on how and where to set up camp to be messy. He knows how to throw a good monkey wrench into any operation. And again, especially as black people, sometimes it works. Sometimes it takes for all the employees to gather around and go on strike in order for, uh, you know, an employee to understand, OK, well, I, I've got to pay them more because all of them at once are demanding something different than whatever understanding we have laid down. So Kanye knows how to do this. I mean, hell, the way he sold the stem plate, sold the stem player the way he still got his streams and his numbers, the amount of money he made off of Donda, the way he was able to profit off of the documentary, it was very uh, out of the norm in a way in which he was able to benefit, right? It was abnormal. And, you know, it kind of needed to be. The, the, the way in which artists are able to make money off of their own work, that is a construct that needs to be shaken up so that someone can remix it and get better results, especially when it comes to Black people who may not be as financially literate or have accountants or CPAs that can really care about their money. Also, when it comes to celebrities, especially Black celebrities being in control of their image and how and what the media can say about them, that is also something that needs to be shaken up, both of which Kanye West has spoken out and shaken up both of those ideas, but you can't apply that same logic to the well-being of your mind, your livelihood and trying to raise your children, your relationships. It's not, that's not just a business. You still have to take care of yourself. And Kanye West's mind continues to slip when he feels like he can use skills that worked in a business sense and an emotional sense or personal sense or whatever the case is. That is an issue. However, he knows how to disrupt. He knows how to disrupt the regular established order and convenience people and convenience systems. And he's very tactful with that. Overall, my opinion on Kanye West is that he's a troll. Kanye West is a troll. Listen, Kanye West is a guy that literally stood on syndicated television round 9-11 next to Michael Myers and said, Bush doesn't like black people. That's bold. That, that alone could have got him killed. You understand how bold it is to speak out against presidents, former or current, and then to flat out call them racist? That's bold. So you, he's developed how to be bold, right? But he just applies it to everything. And it's just doesn't have any tact. It's very sloppy. Right. So he's a troll. And I'm not even sure if he knows he's a troll, but I'm not trying to lend him no benefit of the doubt because I can see based on what Kanye is doing, he's using everyone else's talking points, everyone else's hypothesis to try to creating excuses or justifications for his actions through observing everybody else's talking point. It's giving very much Tyler Perry a little bit, but I, I, I digress. Kanye West ultimately, he specializes in shock value. He specializes in creating gasp worthy moments. I mean, <laughs> Do we not remember um, when he had all those different colors of hair? Do we not remember when Kanye West was peeing on a Grammy, right? Like Kanye West's marketing tactic is I have to make them gasp. I have to make them say, damn, what is Ye doing now? What is he going through? Why is he doing this? Why is he thinking this way? That's the only way he knows how to do things. Kanye West don't have a mellow way a regular way of just presenting himself to people to the internet to media it's very interesting all the way down to him walking around with fisherman boots and and torn up uh you know sweatshirts and things looking like he just escaped an insane asylum 
It's crazy. And those be the sweaters he be selling for like $4,000. And it's just looking like cut up Walmart Jansport. Make it make sense. I don't, I don't understand. This is what he specializes in. And somehow in his mind, he's like, this is cool because number one, I'm going to get a reaction out of people. And number two, people are going to hate it. And I'm bold enough to walk in what people hate to create this polarizing reaction. This is how I'm going to dominate the headlines is by doing what people hate. And then he does so much of what people hate because that's how you get a reaction. And then wonders why people end up seeming like they hate him. I'm not saying everybody hates him, but there's definitely a, every time you see Kanye West pop up on your phone. People ultimately hate a lot of these antics because they are annoying and they're full of what we hate and you you do that on purpose. But nonetheless, do we all remember? Let, let us, let none of us forget when Kanye West, and thank y'all for hitting thumbs up on this video. I appreciate y'all. Let's not forget, right? When Kanye West told all of us that slavery was a choice. Is that not getting a reaction out of black folk who for years upon years upon years, our parents, our great grandparents and so on and so forth, literally expect, well, my parent wasn't a slave, obviously, right? Like I'm a millennial, but come on now for you to come out and say slavery was a choice. You know, that's crazy, but we're supposed to feel bad about you having a difficult time co-parenting with your non-black baby mama. Baby, that was a choice that we warned you about. So if slavery was a choice and you don't feel bad about the people who feel the effects or the people who still have some of the, the residual, you know, traumas and effects and practices ingrained into them, you don't feel bad for that because it was a choice. You sleeping with Kim was a choice. So who are we feeling bad for? But again, he wanted a reaction. And you know what? With a statement like that, it's giving it's giving anti-black because you wanted to disassociate yourself from the niggas who decided to stay in bondage and to be whipped oh i'm not one of them niggas because i would have been smart enough to walk away from that your ass would have been shot you would have been you, you would have been unalived you know what I'm saying? but but this this is how a raccoon no ra this is how they act they disassociate from the black experience the only time kanye west cares or wants to be a spokesperson for black people black issues albeit in society albeit in the household whatever it is is when it affects him and when he wants something from us and he don't want no money he wants sympathy and he wants us to drag kim 2022 has been a mess divorce is a choice too absolutely <laughs> absolutely and so him expecting sympathy from us for every time he gets on, he rants and he makes himself look like this innocent person and everybody else is the bad guy. No, that was a choice. Kanye West also, he likes to trigger people. Shock value, gas worthy moments. He likes to trigger people. All these things are what a troll does. This is the textbook definition of how a troll acts. A troll wants attention by saying things that aren't necessarily true and things that are either the general consensus and understanding or things that actually happen. How are you going to say that stuff in the history book that we literally could not escape? How are you going to say that was a choice? So we decided to stay in slavery and, and bore our children and our children and generations into slavery. Stop it. Stop it. No. Like I said, he likes to trigger people. And why, what, what happens when you trigger people, Right. When you trigger people, people become more vulnerable when they're triggered. People are easier to manipulate when they are triggered. What does this cause? It causes a trauma bond. When you are triggering someone, you're tapping into some sort of internal trauma that they have. He tax, taps into black people, but he's like, oh, look, I'm just a father trying to raise my kid. I'm just trying to you're trying to keep the black family together. Oh, oh, it's so hard for a black man because they're trying to control me in the industry. Ain't speaking up for none of these causes and for none of these situations. Not using your voice, your platform, and the influence that you do still have. You're not using your voice to bring awareness or to spend time talking about these things unless woe is me is affected. You don't care about black people, black issues in a black household until it's you. It's bull crap. And you are creating trauma bonds with people. Trauma bonds are a real thing. We're both sitting here sharing our hurt. We're vulnerable. We've let our guard down, albeit subconsciously or not. 
people bond over that trauma. They feel like, damn, I'm not the only one who has been hurt this way or who has experienced this amount of pain. And therefore, a connection solidifies. You start to feel less alone because both of y'all have laid out some ugly trauma. Stop it. Kanye, <laughs> a broken clock is wrong two times a day, but you like to trigger people. To, to, to uh, trigger people are vulnerable people are easier people to manipulate, period, point blank. And that's why I am not moved. I'm not moved by Kanye. I'm concerned about Kanye. I'm concerned about what he's doing to the, the health of his children. And just in general, Kanye was, you know what he specializes in? He uses a lot of buzzwords. And, and as I was saying earlier uh, in the video about Kanye West, he always makes himself the victim. And how do you end up using a slur towards Trevor Noah, a slur, right, that you end off passing off under the guise of a song, a gospel song? Kumbaya, my Lord. You use that song as an opportunity to intentionally misspell words to pass off a racial slur towards another black man, but you're such a man of God. And you weaponized a gospel song to call Trevor Noah a raccoon, no R-A. This is Sunday service. And Where they do that at? Where they do that at, Kanye? That's why I feel like a lot of this that he be doing and a lot of the stuff that he be saying is virtue signaling. He wants to come off a certain type of way but honestly, I listened to Trevor Noah's commentary and his thoughts about the dynamic between Kim and Kanye. And to keep it a buck, he was very non-biased. He had some points where he felt like, you know what, Pete Davidson shouldn't have said that. He said that. That, that's exactly what he said. And there was also a time when he kind of just felt like, listen, Kanye, we are concerned. Somebody might get hurt. And instead of just looking away and saying, oh, a car crash is coming up, let's not be concerned. Should we not be concerned and put on our hazards just to be safe? The, the underlying sentiment within what Trevor Noah had to say about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's dysfunctional co-parenting dynamic is, if Kim Kardashian can't escape an upset ex that is harassing her and doesn't want to let go, if this is Kim Kardashian with her net worth being what it is, her desirability being what it is and all that other stuff, imagine what regular everyday average folks, imagine what they go through, the type of domestic harassment that they deal with and the way they have to tiptoe around their ex-partners as they are co-parenting. Imagine what the regular person got to deal with if Kim Kardashian with all of her privilege, all of her money, all of her power, if she can't even escape the narcissistic abuse that Kanye West is putting on her in front of all of our eyes. That was a sentiment. He did not roast Kanye. He did not villainize. He did not drag Kanye. It was some of the most respectable stuff. And the fact that he had criticism for Kanye and Pete, it lets you know it wasn't coming from a malicious place or a place of hurt. But Kanye West turns around and, and dishes out an anti-black racial slur, which let's keep it above. That's a slur that has really evolved over time. It don't mean what it once meant, but the nerve of Kanye West to be calling anybody a raccoon, no R.A. The nerve, because present day, that just mean, that it means a sellout, period. But before, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, it was a bit different. So I broke down all that history in the last video that I uploaded earlier today. So make sure you are able to check that out. But Kanye West got some nerve calling Ntibati a sellout. The nerve. Kanye, you are a sellout. You don't care about black people or black issues unless you're able to tie it into the reason in which why you want us to be your tech dog and drag Kim Kardashian. I'm not having it. No, I'm not moved. You're weaponizing us. And the fact that we can be fierce in holding people accountable, we will not let up if we feel like a black person who hasn't handed off the culture and gifted their culture to somebody that we told you wasn't deserving, someone that we told you was going to use you and dry you out. And here you are, dried out of all common sense, emotionally exhausted, looking for our help. You didn't give a fuck about what we thought when you was going into it and we warned you. Why should we care now and be all up in arms? No. 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 <laughs> Absolutely not. 
It's not happening. It's not. And all those buzzwords, you know, if Kanye West says the word gaslight one more time, every time he don't make sense and somebody try to talk sense into him, they're trying to gaslight me. They try to they try to control black. <sighs> Let me go to the bush and weep. I I, I need I need to go. Ah! Let me make my way to the bush because I'm sick and tired of Kanye in this mess. Okay. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. I'm tired. <clears throat> it's like watching my two-year-old. I get up in middle of the day, middle of the night, whatever time it is, and it's Kanye Weston post, and I'm like, oh, sh let me go screenshot everything. Let me go. Get it's, it's like chasing around a two-year-old. You know when you realize either your two-year-old has something in their mouth. And you're like, ah, what you got in your mouth? Let me get it. They take off running. Ah, let me get that. Same with your animals. Your animals didn't pick something up off the floor. What you got? They go running up. Keeping up with Kanye is a mess. You will lose brain cells. And that's why I was able to use him being banned off of Instagram and segue into just having a discussion and creating some dialogue about the historical context of the word raccoon no R-A. Okay. <laughs> Dear Yvette, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, Dr. Nikki Proctor Walden, PhD, thank you for the $10 super chat. I appreciate that as well. So let's continue because I, I I got a couple more thoughts and I can't. Well, I want to see if y'all can follow Kanye West's train of thought in this unseen video where he's ranting about not being OJ Simpson. We know you're not OJ Simpson. God, we hope you ain't no dang on OJ Simpson. See, OJ Simpson can't be trusted with knives. And the way you lose it, who would want Kanye West to be left home by himself in a room with knives? It's not okay. You can barely leave him alone with crayons because you just don't know what Kanye is going to do. He's not well. The men are not well. <laughs> Kanye cannot be around no dag on knives. Okay. <laughs> So again, he uses a lot of buzzwords. He weaponizes the black card. And that is one of the most frustrating things for me. Um, it, it's really irritates to me. Somehow he always makes himself to be the victim. And then he says things like, they're trying to take the black man out of the household. There, you know. They're trying to take the black man out of the household. And there's an agenda. Is there an agenda? Yes. In general, has society, has anti-black society been trying to take the black man out of the household? Yes, that is the number one way to weaken, you, you know, black structuring and what solidifies us, right? I mean, love is just it. And if you can take that backbone out of the home, that's the quickest way to dismantle, right? But trying to get you away from Kim, somebody that we can really see that you're bothering. Don't nobody want to be agreeing with no Kim Kardashian. But damn, you're fucking bothering her. You're harassing her. Like, that's that's crazy. You know, is there an agenda? Are they trying to take the black man out of the household? Yes. But are you just another black man having issues with his baby mama? Yeah. You, you, you are one person. That's not representative of the reasons and why all the other black men that you never speak of. And so you want some support and sympathy. Stop it. Stop acting like you are the martyr for all these things that you never open your mouth and use your voice and your influence to speak about. Just stop it. And again, I find it to be so childish, so, so man childish of you to be guilt tripping your celebrity friends and acquaintances into speaking up for you. They see you harassing a woman. What do you expect them to say? Then he says, and I love how I have no celebrity friends that will speak up on my behalf. Y'all just watching? Okay, cool. What they supposed to do? If they not going to call and get you put under a 5150, then what you expect them to do? How are they supposed to go to the... The only people taking up for your dumb ass is dumb people. The game and Soldier Boy. I woke up this morning and saw Soldier Boy with swollen eyes. I know his breath was funky. It looked like he had just woke up ain't grabbed a toothbrush, ain't spoke to God, ain't checked his bank account, but he got online to call himself trying to scold, skeet on behalf of Kanye. W what is there to defend? 
Soldier Boy, who is really moved by you trying to put somebody in line? Soldier Boy, stop. Like these celebrities, I just I just don't be understanding. So you you tagging Soldier Boy in to help. What? Stop it. But you're not stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? You go to bed at night, you lay there, and you take responsibility for yourself. I'm sick and I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. Kanye West is exhausting. But it is also like, dang, this, this, is, this is the result of somebody who has way too much money and way too much time on their hands. They don't know what to do. Kanye does not know what to do with all that money and time. His heart is broken. He thought he had legitimate control over Kim Kardashian. How silly. <laughs> How silly were you to think that you were really going to control and stop her from dealing with anyone else after she was done sucking all the culture out of you that you handed over to her <laughs> I mean, make it make it make sense thank you for the 999 super chat atmos i really appreciate it um so yeah you know kanye west it, i just i can't <laughs> can we follow kanye west train of thought not even on matt quest matt quest can't even help exactly so to continue with some of these thoughts right and, and thank y'all for hitting thumbs up on the video i appreciate y'all i really did miss y'all like a lot a lot Okay. Kanye West, he leans on the race card as a crutch. It's sloppy. It's tacky. He doesn't even know how to apply it correctly. And that's just that. Th there's no debate there. There's nothing to argue about. Right. Like he leans on the race card every time, you know, he, he, he might call Kim Kardashian right now. Hey, can I pick North up in two minutes? I mean, if you didn't plan it out, if there was nothing, they already had something going on. Oh, they're trying to take the black. I, I can't pick up North today. But in this video, I'm about to show you. He states he took North to school three days out. You know, he, he drove to Kim's house three times throughout the week. So the math is just not math in here, right? And y'all know, trying to hold Kanye accountable, trying to hold any black man accountable, let's keep it above. An immature black man that you were trying to hold, not all black men, immature black men, sometimes, right? Especially the man childs, right? Sometimes they're mama's boys, um, single kids, ones who haven't healed or emotionally matured. Like, that's just that. Trying to hold them accountable. <laughs> trying to hold immature Black men accountable is like trying to give your cat a bath, okay? They will not let you. They will play victim. And the first thing they'll say, you trying to you trying to tear the Black man down. I'm, I'm covering the R. Kelly trial. Here I go, Reading all this stuff. I mean, we got the tapes, the, the 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 transcripts of the tapes. He's literally peeing on minors. He's literally having sex with minors. Oh, y'all just trying to tear the black man down. Am I really trying to tear the black man down? Or am I just holding this black man accountable? You know, some black people will catch, will take accountability as an attack. Oh, you trying to hold me to task for something. You're attacking me. It's not an attack accountability because we want you to do better we wouldn't waste our breath trying to get you together if we didn't want you to do better if we wanted you to just stay there and fail we wouldn't offer you a lifeline at all and at this point we don't have any lifelines to give a Kanye West not only does he not want them but he's already exhausted all of them we was throwing in all types of floaty devices when he was drowning under the uh, under being just enthralled by Kim K and, and, and all she had going on. He really thought that that was going to be his end all be all. Like it was a fairy tale. We were trying to save him then. He didn't want to be saved. Now all of a sudden he's out here frantically manufacturing a way for us to be his attack dogs and save him from the embarrassment of really going all out for Kim and Kim making him look stupid. I mean, hell, you make Kim look stupid too. I mean, she's she's feeling stupid right now, but she also, she has to do. She's got to move on and keep herself busy. Sometimes the best way to get over an old man is to get under a new one. I don't think that Pete Davidson is the end all be all for her, but I do think he's a rebound. He's a jump off. He's convenient. And she's out here living her life. Kanye, you got your little Kim lookalike. What, what are you, you, you got a couple Kim lookalikes. That's Another red flag for an issue. Like, what's what's going on? Like, your elevator does not go all the way to the top. 
and we all of a sudden, every time you malfunctioning, which is all the time, supposed to be all up in arms and shit, but th th this ain't our fight. You don't like our kind. You wanted your little exotical. Huh? It was your little exotical. I tried to warn you about your exotical. Chow, anyway, I get so exhausted just trying to. A narcissist is always going to make it about himself. Again, you tell me. Tell me what has Kanye done for poor people? What has Kanye done for black people? And I'm not talking about, you know, foundations, money, and donating, right? I'm talking about just using his voice. That's free shit and it's powerful shit. It really is. It's powerful stuff. Kanye was opening up his mouth about any issue in any state or with, with, with any individual. It would cause change. It would cause uh, a, a crazy amount of dialogue and people would look up and listen and I guarantee you things would be different in the blink of an eye. Kanye West, is Kanye West, Cardi B, you know, people like that with hundreds of, you know, millions of followers, that sh matters. And so Kanye West can't even do the least he could do, which is just speak about some of the things that affect the people that he wants to save him right now, which means that you're just not even interested. Shit, people donate money when they're not even interested and they just, they just write it off, right? But you can't even speak about it. Like, get out of here, man. You can't speak about it unless you are in that situation. So Kanye West loves to make himself a martyr for racial issues and, and, and uh, you know, adversity as it pertains to Black people. He likes to make himself a martyr for political issues, but again, only when it affects him. He likes to make himself a martyr for um, the Black family dynamic and how severely fractured it is, because it is. You, you know, I speak quite frequently about the Black family dynamic and everything that's broken about it. Um, and I, I just enjoy that dialogue. So I'm always there engaging in it and finding new ways to remix what and how things are really affecting us. But again, Kanye don't speak about it unless and only when it is affecting him. He wants to be a martyr for combating race leeches and culture vultures, because now that is something that he experiences and he sees, despite the fact that we were trying to lead that horse to the water, but he wouldn't drink. Now, all of a sudden, he sees what it feels like to be empty and have someone to use you for clout and run off with, I gave her the culture. I made her cool. How's she just going to keep using the coolness now that we not together? Oh, you have a godlike complex, Kanye, because that's what I hear. You know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Boom, that's that. I guess you think you the Lord. You thought you gave her a proximity to blackness or the culture and you feel like you should just be able to revoke it and she should be miserable and bland and not use no seasoning and even get her BBL reduced more. Like, no, it doesn't happen that way. We told you not to hand the culture to her. You did. You did. And now she has biracial children, which she will always be able to conveniently use as an excuse or a reason to have one foot in the door to speak on Black issues. But does she really have the range? Does she really have the experience? No. And that's why it was dangerous you laying down to not even produce, you know, reproduce one, two, three, four times. Four times. You gave her this power. You a sick freak, man. You a sick freak. Yep. Yep. You a sick freak. But hey, not, <laughs> listen, I, it, it seems like Kanye is having quite the struggle trying to revoke, revoke the proximity to blackness. You know, he goes on to say that black men are being controlled by the industry. But again, he's only bringing that up when it affects him. And when he feels like he wants to do something in, in, in Hollywood or the entertainment industry just isn't isn't moving fast enough, right? Like I personally, I find it to be so distasteful the way that anytime Kanye West has something to say to Netflix or people, he can't just send a text message. He's got to like put a message in the bottle and the bottle is Instagram and everybody got to see it. He's like, y'all tell Netflix, I want final executive decision. We not airing the documentary until they talk to me. Why couldn't you just call him up and say that shit? 
Why couldn't you have your people call their people and say that shit? Why, why did you have to put us in that conversation? And now we have nothing left to do but to speculate about how crazy you is because you gave us that leverage. You gave us that ammo. He, he goes, tell Kid Cudi I won't be because he's cool with you know who. Or tell, or tell no, we're we not sending your messages. Now we're going to talk shit and make jokes and people are going to see that and react to it. But like Kanye, I, I just, Kanye goes on to say, I'm in a position, how am I in a position where I've got to pray to see my children? I need to stop. Y'all need to grow up. Grow up. I'm tired of telling y'all to grow up. Y'all need to stop it. I'm tired of it, y'all. You ain't finna work me out. I don't know. Why do you have to pray to see your kids? Why do you gotta pray before you eat? It's called grace. You feel like you shouldn't have to? Then don't do it. I mean, like, what? I mean, I... At this point, like, yeah, let's just play semantics to just, like, exhaust some energy from you, Kanye. Why do I got to pray to see my kids? I mean, you can pray all you want, but when you're literally acting like a 12-year-old trying to do whatever and throwing a temper tantrum, no, it's not just going to be easy. And you can't just talk to God and say, God, override these decisions and these boundaries that she's laying down, right? Like, I, I just, I can't. For good measure, we're going to try to go and follow right um kanye's train of thought for five minutes just five minutes just five minutes this is the unseen footage what i need to do is i really do need to take a sip of water okay it's been a minute your girl is thirsty <laughs> so let me go ahead and pay this commercial pay a bill real quick and then we're going to come back and watch the unseen five minute video that only lived on kanye west's page for 20 seconds y'all make sure y'all hit thumbs up and we're gonna be right back so let's see if you really bout about it. If you've been serious about what you've been saying about wanting to support more black owned businesses, here's your chance. I found a spot for us to grab our hats, hoodies, affordable electronics, phone accessories, and gadgets from. It's over on edwardso.com. That's E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. Grab something for your hubby, your wife. Hey, I ain't encouraging that side chick behavior, but it's just in time for the holidays. So head on over there and grab your AirPod cases, hoodies, and affordable electronics. That's edwerso.com, E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. And I'll see you over there. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm the plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. And we're back. Thank you so much to everybody that is watching live. That means you already on the bus. And if you're catching the replay, that's okay. Just uh, know that you're not on the bus. You're chasing behind the bus. But make sure you hit thumbs up and pay your fare anyway because it's free. Soldier Girl, thank you so much for the $1.99 Super Chat. I really appreciate it. And to all of the new channel members. And thank you for the love. The Samantha Edit, I missed y'all too. R.A., Brittany, Light Visions. I see a lot of you all have rejoined the membership and that really makes me feel great. And thank you so much for understanding. Now, let's get right into it. Without further ado, the title of this video is definitely about Kanye West saying he's not OJ. And it is a video that you have not seen before. I can guarantee you that. So let's get into this. Brace yourself. Gra gra grab a sip of water. Grab something, okay? To make sure you can keep your thoughts straight. I want to know if you can follow his train of thought and if any of what he has to say is coherent to you, okay? Let's watch. So this is the issue I had with Act 3 of the documentary. When I was having a normal business meeting, Cootie says, oh, I got to turn the camera off. So it was set up from act one to, to three. I had two of my people editing 
uh, editing the documentary after I went up and demanded that I'm able to get final cut. They did not want to change this narrative. There's an underlying tone in the documentary amidst all of the showing like how confident I am to say in a business meeting that he wanted to turn the camera off. This dude is talking about he's so Christian. Christians are pro-life. Just just open the Bible. That's When I talked about that, he turned the camera off and I was talking to this meeting, uh, talking in the meeting with some business people that he was trying to do business with. He turned the camera off on these parts. Like, look, if you're so much my friend, you know, then why would you even air something that you had to turn the camera off? Another thing is I didn't know about the 30 million. And when that came up, I brought this to one of my friends and all that he brought up was, man, I remember when, when Cootie had fake $20 bills. And so there are some things positive. I respect that we put it out. I think it's a beautiful documentary, but there was an undertone. That intrinsic undertone is that of control or it's like when people, you know, people thought the vaccination would put the market to be. So I'm not saying that that's the case, but it's something that it ends. Let's get, look, just, just one second, just one second, right? He said there was an underlying undertone of control in the documentary. And then he goes on to talk about the vaccine and saying that, oh, it's the mark of the beast. Oh, but but I'm not saying that, right? So it's like, oh, you're willing to tiptoe around being cautious and not saying anything bad against the established order and, and, and the propaganda surrounding the virus, whether it be the virus itself, whether it be the vaccine, whether it be the boosters, whether it be how, you know, that like whatever, you're scared to speak out and speak your true thoughts about the virus. You want to make sure you even throw some insurance in there. I, I'm not saying that's what it is, but da, 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 but you're willing to be reckless to anyone and everything else. Hell, even Netflix people, uh, Pete Davidson, Pete Davidson's ghostwriter for his jokes, Trevor Noah, D.L. Hughley, Hillary Clinton, Charlemagne the God. I mean, you name it, you done went after him, right? But you scared to speak. You know what I mean? So it's like, are you bold or are you not bold? Like, you know what you want to be careful with regards to speaking about. And the nerve of you to talk about control, hold up. Beautiful documentary, but there was an undertone. That intrinsic undertone is that of control or it's like when people, you know, people is that of control? Hmm. And I'm not, I'm not gonna let up until I have the control of. How hmm. What was that word he just used? I'm not gonna let up until I have the control. Oh, oh, but that was an underlying, the, uh, an undertone of control in the documentary that you didn't like? Th did they portray you as controlling or are you controlling or do you seek control? Which one of the three statements are true? Because in my mind, all three of them are true. You seek control, you want control, you are controlling, right? Those are really two things, right? You seek control, you are controlling and they portrayed you as a controlling individual. You are a narcissist, buddy. I think that if you would live up to your narcissism, it would be accepted a lot better. But the nerve of you to speak out against people who do the things that you do, for example, you calling somebody a raccoon, no R.A. What? That's you. I bet not ever hear you talk about a narcissist, Kanye, because that is also you and controlling. If you were to embrace that, you would have a different level, a different layer of relatability. Because right now, you, you, you're damn sure not relating to Black people because you only c come here and speak about us when you need us. You don't give a hell about poor people. You're never relatable to us. Hell, you could relate to the narcissists and the control freaks by just admitting that you're that. But hey, keep on saying one thing during the day and doing another thing at the night, but baby. Stop wondering why we look at you like you so crazy. Number one, we know you crazy, clinically crazy. But outside of being clinically crazy, we know that you just need help. That's it. You, you a wild boy. Come on, man. Let me get truth. People thought the vaccination would put the market to be. So I'm not saying that that's the case. But it's something that at any given moment, boom, boom, we could point to that and we could say that don't listen to him. He's crazy. That's the reason why there's never been a magazine cover that said, oh, yay, richest black man 
of all time because you got to only believe black people in the camera that are controlled by the industry in general. So right now, something I thought about this morning, an uh, ele um, uh, element of privilege is how am I in a position where I have to pray to see my children? I, I sent the information. I why are you asking us? Like, why won't you see, see, there's, there's so many things here, right? There's so many things that he speaks about. He speaks about Netflix documentary issues. He speaks about having to pray to see his children. And, and I'm sorry, don't get me wrong. Like I believe in Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm going to God when this ghetto earth, when God calls me home, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm spiritual. I'm, I'm more spiritual than religious. You can pray about whatever you want. But if there's no like action behind, like you can't just pray to see your kids. You have to do things to make that dynamic work and to make your co-parenting situation a bit more cohesive. And, 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 and right now you're doing everything to throw a monkey wrench in there because what? You want to inconvenience Kim. You want to ruin her reputation. You want to ruin her quality of life. And you know that her reputation has a big amount like that. Her reputation is her currency to make it through life, period, point blank. That's it. End of story. Without Kim needing a, a, a reputation or visibility that's more favorable than not, she's nothing. I, not you asking us why you got to pray to see your kids. Nigga, go get a therapist. That's the solution. And or figure out some mediation, like legitimate. Like mediation is a real thing. It's not even difficult. Like you either go to the courts, right? But you, you don't want them court ordered people. You're a fucking millionaire. Get some mediation and professionals. You have enough money to do so. You and Kim to help really you and Kim need assistance with finding that middle ground to make raising your kids a more peaceful experience for all parties involved, but primarily for those kids. Y'all think that this negative energy, this friction between the two of you isn't rubbing off on them somehow. They may not be able to articulate it to you and shit. Maybe they could better than you, but this is going to affect them somehow. Kanye West is not being solution oriented. All he wants is for us to be his attack dog and drag Kim for him. He doesn't want to get help. He doesn't want to get mediation. He really just wants to be back with Kim and that is the problem. You taking things to the court of public opinion only to garner sympathy for yourself and slander for Kim. That's not solving shit, baby, but that's what you want. And to say. I didn't get the return text. There was no reason why my children couldn't come to Sunday service. My mom, I, I was told that North was over a sleepover. The type of content, the people, my mom used to check every single person whose house I would go over there one by one. And there's all kinds of things. So when I get to the point where I'm like standing up on TikTok, I've done said it 10 times probably. You know what I'm saying? I, it's just general dad being a father, being out here by myself. Yes, yeah, celebrity, you know, person that basically everyone, you know, in my life asks for stuff. And, you know, it's, you know, it's just, I'm in a very... Uh, I'm I'm in a very uh like like Quali will put it. I'm in I'm breathing thin air here, but I'm gonna use this platform and explain to you uh exactly what I and y'all know that this is what I'm dealing with. The the press they can't spin it, and I'm not I'm not gonna let up until I have the control of how my black children, how my children and the content and the surroundings uh, being let have, you know, makeup and high heels and, you know, the, the just the influence on my, on my boys and all that. It's just, look, and here's another thing I want to tell you. I was at the house three. This how you know he ain't got no friends. I'm sorry. I caught this and I rewinded it so many times. He's sitting here venting these thoughts saying he ain't got out to nobody else. Like he just... A random string of thoughts from the Netflix to how am I in a position to 
to have to pregnant see my kids. Black men are being controlled by the industry. None of this is cohesive. And then he remembers, oh, it's another thing I want to tell y'all. Like he talking to a friend and you talking to a camera, a big group of strangers that you're hoping you can win over. You've won over large audiences before, but maybe it was with your talent or maybe it was with your boldness applied to a good cause. But this here, you're not winning nobody over. But let's listen to this. Makeup and high heels and you know the, the just the influence on my on my boys and all that's just look and here's another thing i want to tell you i was at the house three times this week driving i was staying two hours out of an hour and a half out of la i drove a total of six hours every day like three days in a row to take my kids to school and then i was in the house with kim putting the kids to bed doing oh really a, a, a three times. Oh, so you now you want to brag to us, right? See, you can't keep your thoughts straight. You want to brag about, oh, it, it was three times. I was in the house. I drove hours and three times this week. I saw North, but in, in all your other posts in the days before and after surrounding this video, which was on March the 13th, you were saying, she's trying to keep me from my kids. I'm not allowed to see my kids and da, da, da. Here's one thing I do know. You do need to have some decency in the way you communicate with the, the, the person in which you're co-parenting with, y'all have to have a plan. And Kanye West, his thoughts are not even organized, let alone his plans. He's on here praying that he can see his kids and posting this stuff on Instagram and saying to God in the middle of a prayer rant, God, can you uh, make sure the nannies see this and nannies, if you're listening, because I know Kim got some nannies. If y'all could bring the kids to Sunday service. So you begging and pleading with the nannies that are in Kim's home for them to go against what Kim is telling them. Because she already said, no, North not going to make it. But you praying, performative praying, right? Because you recording yourself with your eyes closed. And the prayer ain't even a prayer. It's really a rant. You talking to God about Pete being in a bed with Kim and the text messages. Boy, boy. But you praying to God that the nannies that Kim pay disobey right go against with the mom that's signing their paychecks that they go against what kim say and bring the kids to sunday service if they see your prayer rant on instagram kanye kanye a 14 year old could tell you that that's not gonna work what <laughs> what what I don't, I just, I don't get that. I, it's not for me to get. I... Puzzles, doing homework with my daughter. Oh, you, three times in a week because in these posts, in these posts up here, let's find one. And both of these captions, you posted the picture, you posted the caption, and then you took a screenshot of the picture and the caption and gave us another caption. Both of these captions, you're alluding to Kim refusing to allow you to see and spend time with your child, but you on here talking to this camera that you treating like it's your best friend saying and bragging about the three different times that you saw North that week. Somebody help me make it make sense. Somebody in the comments said North don't want to go. Hey, look, <laughs> North might not want to go. North might not want to go, but listen. It... With my children. And then, so that's a that's already creating, oh, I'm cool. I can pick my kids up. I felt energized because I couldn't even rap. I couldn't do anything after North wasn't allowed to go to Donda 2. It paralyzed me. I had I had verses to finish. I had, you know, I, I just couldn't, it, it was done at that point, you know? And then, you know, I went to the DR and I came back on vacation. When I came back, I saw my children, I felt energized. So now, you know, yeah, that was a form of kryptonite that was on me. And after I saw him, I felt alive again. And then just at the drop of the dime, she can be like, okay, you don't, you don't see your kids today. And that's, I'm not playing with that. And before we go to an actual court, I'm coming to the court of public opinion, since that's where they exist after the divorce. That's where they existed. Well, I'm not here to play about this. 
watch this, scrutinize this. Laura, Tracy, Chris, all y'all scrutinize this very close. I am not OJ Simpson. You're not going to win this one. Again, Kanye... <laughs> OJ trying to figure out. Now, why am I in it? And you could have did now, it. See, can I get it wrong? I didn't you never apologize. I mean, because somebody make it make sense. After really trying to follow that, all he just said, I need the bush, please. Put some pancakes in the chat for me, please. Hit the thumbs up button. And if you a channel member, hit the weep in the bush emoji right now, because that's where I'm on my way to. Please. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Kanye weaponizes everything. And it is possible for either parent, mom or dad, to weaponize the kids and use them as a pawn, use them as ammo in a way to push the other button's parents. I've seen it. I'm a project product of that, honestly. I was weaponized by the woman parent. I was weaponized by my mom. My mom used me to get under my dad's skin f in, in so many different ways. And I remember that. And I didn't know how to articulate that when I was six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. But when I grew up and I replayed all of those scenarios back, I saw what it was clear as day. But there are times when uh, you know, a father can weaponize a child and use that child and just trying to make things confused in between the way the child co-parent to give the other parent a headache. I'm not saying Kim isn't doing that, but Kanye overshares enough to let us know to the point where we can pick out the lies. We can pick out the inconsistencies and see, hey, you said that this is what it is, but the next day you said that's not what it was. You just trying to create an inconvenience for her so that you're they trying to break up the black home. They ain't trying to do shit. They are trying to get out that group chat. I guarantee you that. We is they. I'm they. It's me. I'm they. We're trying to get out of the group chat. We're tired. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to grow up. Grow up. I'm tired of telling y'all to grow up. Y'all need to stop it. I'm tired of it, y'all. You ain't finna work me out. It's too much. It's way too much. I'm feeling like Oprah at this point. I just, I don't, <laughs> I don't want no parts. God damn. This is just out of, this is out of order. Out of order. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let me get through the last few uh, talking points that, um, that I have here, right? Kanye West, he strategically wants to, conveniently wants to skip past the court of law. He goes straight to the court of public opinion. He's not solution-based. He's looking for attention and sympathy for himself. He's looking for slander for Kim Kardashian. He wants us to attack them. But when we were warning him, he didn't care, period, point blank. Here's the part where I feel like Kanye West has the way in which he's able to literally dominate the headlines whenever he pops out whenever kanye west is doing something he takes over the headlines that's because with whatever he does he does it the same way each and every time excuse me each and every time he does it the same way kanye west has figured out that people like seeing celebrities angry People like seeing celebrities angry, period, point blank. That's what people like to see. Whether the celebrities are really angry or not, that's what people like to see. Think about it. You watching any reality show, you miss a couple of episodes, whatever. You see that preview about them throwing chairs, hooting, hollering, doing all this, you right in there, right? And that's just a physical fight, but that's obviously, it's a, a very cut clear example of anger on full display. People love a good train wreck and people will hit you with optical illusions where they either aren't really angry or they aren't upset or they create something to be angry or upset about we call that a storyline Kanye West creates these delusions but he gets trapped inside the delusion to the point where he starts believing it and he starts selling it so well and getting upset when maybe you know He's labeled as an angry black man or, oh, it's always just drama. Yeah, because he figured out that drama is a part of breaking the code, so to speak, right? So we know that one thing that Kanye West does and he does it well and he does it often. Anytime the camera makes it to Kanye West, what does he do? 
he stopped smiling right away. He stopped smiling so hard that you think he's angry. The flip side to this is he stopped smiling so hard and so fast that you think, oh, he's just awkward in front of the camera. Or he just doesn't like smiling. No, you stop smiling abruptly. The very first thing that goes across people's mind is, oh, dang, what made him angry? Was it that camera person? Well, damn, what did that cameraman do to him? Okay, so every cameraman he come across, or why did his mood just shift to something that's not happy or is, in fact, the direct opposite? This is very calculated for Kanye, in my opinion. He has these antics down to a science because if Kanye West comes out, and you name me a time when he ever has, right? I'll stand corrected. Name me a time when Kanye West has ever came out and was soft-spoken when he was happy. Name me a time when Kanye West came off as, as happy and you really believed it and you thought it wasn't performative. When has Kanye West ever came out and said or done anything with no anger attached to the message or the sentiments? It's not often. I've seen him in a handful of clips where he's talking about music or the impact of music. But when I say it's a handful of clips, I really mean that. I really, really, really mean that. Matter of fact, I have one of the clips right here that we can go ahead and watch. And it's just a couple seconds long. Protecting your kids from the indoctrination of the media, the thousands and thousands of images that are fed to children by the age of six or seven. And within those images, there are images mixed in that we don't know about as parents that are purposely mixed in to lower the kids' superpower and esteem so that they can be more susceptible to consumption and feel that they need to consume and become a part of the robotic numeric system that controls so many, so much of the media. Did I? You know, I just had to say it like this. You can rewind it and then, and then do research what I'm talking about. But. You heard that? I'm just saying it like it is. You can rewind it and do research. He didn't get that reaction from the audience he wanted. And I've seen this clip in other places. I played this clip a couple of times in the past. And honestly, half of the people, it lands different for everyone. Half the people feel like, what the hell is he saying? It, it lowers the kids' superpowers and the numeric system. People be like, what? He just put a whole bunch of words together. And if you really listen closely and you listen to it maybe two times, you do really hear the message in which he's trying to get across. Does he have all the right words with the right delivery? No. But he caught in that moment, even in real time, that the crowd just wasn't feeling it. He's used to people getting a reaction out of people. And that crowd was stoic. There are very few clips that you are going to find when Kanye is being soft-spoken and there's no anger attached to the message or the sentiment in which he is trying to emote. And that is because he has figured out that if I am angry, if I am ranting, if I am upset at something or someone, more people will listen and everybody's going to be talking about this. So he makes a habit. Kanye West makes a habit of wearing angry as if it's cool. Again, what do you do when you realize all eyes are on you? You do the coolest thing you can think of. You might have practiced it in the mirror a million times. Kanye West notices a camera on him. What does he do? Let me look mad because that's what they want. And I mean, hell, these are the moments that go viral because there are so many videos of Kanye West just frowning on sight. He's just having a good time. He sees a camera. They're here to take this picture. Let me give them what they want. Most people smile or do a sexy pose. Kanye strategically frowns every time he spots a camera. Every time. People do not listen to Kanye West unless he's mad. So he smiles, he stops, he looks away to look serious or mean. And a lot of people find it to be awkward. Some people find it to be funny, but he does successfully pull off winning a quote unquote moment and making people wonder every time he gives that gesture. It does create a consistent element of mystique. People begin to wonder, <laughs> like, why is he so mad all the time? Like, why is Kanye West so angry? You know, it becomes a mystery. 
like nothing is definitive when it comes to catching Kanye on camera. You like, oh shit, what he do? What he say? You know, it's just it, it's not gonna be black or white. It's not gonna be as simple as this or as simple as that. It's gonna be a whole bunch of whatever the hell he makes it. It's not definitive. It is mysterious. You know that he is not level headed. He's not even killed. He starts to become a person that you imagine in your mind. You remember him as being an individual that is so off of the wall that every time you see his name somewhere, the first thing that comes to your mind is, well, what's the hot take from Kanye today? Because <laughs> I know he said something crazy because you know he said he said or did something crazy. What, what, what's Kanye ranting about today? Who pissed Kanye off today? Those are the normal questions because you know he's just going to be erratic. It is mysterious. He subsequently throws a temper tantrum every day. How do you have something as a grown-ass adult? I can see a goddamn two, three, four, five-year-old finding a reason to throw a temper tantrum every day. You're trying to take Elmo from them. You're trying to take the damn Legos and or they want another bowl of cereal. God damn it, you won't give it to them. They upset. They don't want to leave daycare. They don't want to leave mommy. Typical shit. But for a grown man with well, all this time, all this money, all these resources, all this access, every day he conveniently has something to throw a temper tantrum about. Kanye West is an attention needy mama's boy, period. Point blank. Don't debate me. Debate your mama. Have you seen Genius on Netflix? I, I had already deemed Kanye West to be an attention hungry monster for attention based off of his mom. I could sense that his mom, not making excuses because I'm so tired of that. Oh, his mom, he's grieving his mom. How long ago was that? Right. But I had already sensed that he was a mama's boy. But when you watch that goddamn documentary, I mean, his mom was literally like his backbone. His mom was his world. And she just, whenever Kanye walked in that room, when I tell you his mama dropped everything she was doing and gave him that direct contact. Yeah, Kanye, what, what song are you doing today? I mean, knew his songs word for word. She dropped everything she was doing and gave him all that attention. And that's the type of attention he's used to. He's conditioned to receive. And when he's not getting that, he's not well. But sometimes seeking a whole bunch of attention, it doesn't always go the way that you would think. It's just like Lizzo. I want to be naked online. Well, I mean, you do it with no tag, no decency all the time. You can, you wanted attention. You're not getting the attention that you want, though. So now you're mad. Now you're throwing a temper tantrum because you did get the attention, the amount of attention you wanted, just not the type of attention you wanted. But to bring it all back to Kanye, listen, he's a narcissist. He is the movie star in his world. Right. And it's just it's, it's extreme. It is completely extreme. But Kanye West certainly has down to a science. <laughs> down to a science. How to gather the media's attention and to have each and every blog, tabloid, every media outlet. will lead with Kanye West because he does dominate the headlines. OK. Um. Like I said, you know, him garnering attention, you know, this tactic alone, it'll automatically increase the amount of attention that you get in the press and it'll get you more visibility. That's the goal for Kanye West. Now, mind you, he was he was pretty much kind of quiet until that album. So that album was about to come out. Then it's like, let's show off. Let's be hyper angry every day. Let's be hyper angry every day. Yes, L. Thank you so much. I know that I uh, recognize your um, your name in the chat, and I know that you've been with me for a, a long time, so that's why I gave you that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Kanye West. Yeah, he absolutely does study this like a game. Yes, he absolutely does. You know, and he gets maximum visibility. If Kanye West literally rolled down his window tomorrow and said, "I like the smell." Of flowers flowers give me and it, like just some not angry it would not do what it does when he's going ballistic that's just the truth that's just the truth he is strategically angry this is a press tactic for him ultimately kanye west needs to sell people who dislike him will still buy his stuff to listen to it just so they can give it a negative review but his goal was still achieved if you bought it and you are on more people's radar even when you're doing erratic stuff i.e trying to be friends with 45 modi orange you could see kanye west was dying for acceptance 
dying for a friend, dying for some company from a goddamn Donald Trump. I had no clue he was just a pawn in the game and he was being used by that party, by that person, by those people. Up in the White House with all these different color hairs, being friends with the bigot. But all of a sudden, I want you black people to attack this woman that's trying to tear down. Oh, hell no. Hell no. You will befriend him. It's, it's, it's not even about, you know, Republican and Democrat. It's about that moldy ass orange with the toupee. And you really kissing that ass. And him using you as a photo op, just the same way he did with Lil Wayne, same way he did with Kodak Black. And you got the nerve to call Trevor Noah a raccoon, no R.A.? The goddamn nerve of you. I know you lying. Child, if I could go in the bush and weep again, I would, child. I, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> it don't, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. But at the end of the day, like I said, Kanye was is never happy in the press because his ego can't afford to. He can afford to. He's richer than anybody that I've, have I even read about, maybe? Who's Richard? Kanye West to Oprah? That's a good question. I'm going to look that up later on. He can afford to not have to do this. And it, it will probably be better. It will give him some privacy. That's the problem. He exploits himself and is consistently vulnerable. And Kanye West don't know when he's had enough. That's what makes people like him dangerous. I'm okay. Imagine the people around him. You okay? You okay? Every day. I'm okay. No, he's not. He's going to snap. One more picture of Kim Kardashian and Skeet. He's going to lose it. But he don't know he about to lose it because he's not even self-aware enough to understand what's making him upset when he is okay, when he's not okay. To take inventory of his feelings, how are things affecting him? Instead, all he knows is he ain't no goddamn OJ. Well, I'll be. <sighs> he's an only child. I get that. I get that. Only child syndrome is a thing. I was an only child for 13 years and I still would consider myself to be an only child technically because... When you got all of your parents' attention, you got all of your parents' attention. But it's, it was a different way that he got all of his mom's attention. He got all of his mom's attention and he got all of his mom's support. That's some priceless shit. I had a lot of attention, but I didn't have the support to do what I wanted to do in life. But, you know, not to get into me. I yeah. Being an only child is not an excuse for Kanye West to be this way. Contributing factors, sure, absolutely. I think Kanye would be a lot different if he had a gang of siblings. Let's say it was five of them total. It would be different, but I still feel like he would have been throwing temper tantrums to get more attention from his mom than his brothers and sisters. But, you know. <laughs> they said, right, he's no OJ yet, child. Ah! Nah, he not OJ yet. Kim, you better... <laughs> Kim, you better get it together because the people said... He not OJ yet. He not OJ yet. I'm tired. Kanye West has figured out that people like seeing celebrities angry. You know, people like him and Azalea Banks. But Azalea Banks is right more times a day than Kanye West. There is a thin line between genius and insanity. I do feel like Kanye West is so ridiculously talented when it came to music. I feel like there have been times in his career where he's been more focused, though, and when he produced better stuff. But I do think that musically he is gifted. And there are some things that I won't even be able to show because I feel like they're copyrighted. Um, where he speaks about the impact of music, the beats, the way that different 808 sounds and different vibrations and different tempos and genres, how they penetrate different areas and unlock different things within your body. There's certain music where if they want you to be sleepy, then that's what you'll be when they're trying to get a message through to your mind. And there's a certain frequency and a certain like there, there's a science. Music is not just like, oh, let's see if this sounds great. There, there is a science to it. But Kanye has been, you know, again, like Vincent Van Gogh literally cut his own ear off. Like people who are genius, especially artists, they do deal with being quote unquote mad, which is like the dated term for crazy. Kanye West is truly just about insane. But he's coherent enough to the point where I think if he was put under a 5150 right now, there's certain people who are sick but they know how to say all the right things to the doctor to get themselves out of 
needing to be in a hug me jacket, a straight jacket. You get what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I'm thrilled. But when I get there and they want to evaluate me and deem me to be crazy or problematic or this, I'm just going to say all the right things to get out this doctor's face. And then I'm going to be right back out here unhinged on my best bullshit. That's what happens. But nonetheless, Kanye is never happy in the media. And you ask yourself why. Ask yourself why he's never publicly happy. I think that if he embraced privacy, I think that if Kanye West decided to one day stop exploiting himself, I think he would have a lot more peace. But he is in so much dire need of attention that he takes privacy from himself if that makes sense. And then wonder why he doesn't have peace of mind because he invites the media into all of his personal and intricate details. And then when the media doesn't side with him, then he's upset at the media. Then he's talking trash about the media. You literally invited the media into your bedroom and we are trapped in here trying to escape the group chat and the button to leave this group, leave this text message thread. It doesn't work. And we're getting fed up None the less. Listen, these were just a few of my thoughts. I, I feel like I've been backed up since I've been gone, right? Because when I create content, whether it be live or edited, and make sure y'all check out my edited content. The last couple of videos I released, they're really, really good, especially the last one. It's almost 20 minutes of history behind the word coon. Um, but nonetheless, when I'm not creating content, I feel backed up because it is therapeutic when I, um, you know, create content and create my videos or however it is that I express myself. And the fact that I have not been out here talking to y'all, <laughs> like I, I got to get some of this Kanye stuff off my chest. You know, this Kanye stuff started some weeks ago. Um, but nonetheless, your girl is back. So listen, make sure you subscribe. Y'all better be subscribed. Make sure y'all hit that notification bell. That's probably one of the most important things because most of you all that are here, you already know. <laughs> who I am, but hit that notification bell so that every time, and I'm hitting y'all with content just about every day at this point, make sure you hit that notification bell and make sure you hit thumbs up. Share this video on Twitter if you haven't already. I'll retweet, I'll follow you, we can connect. And y'all know I'm always causing some nice friendly chaos over on Twitter. I swear, it's like every two days I got a tweet going viral, okay? Um, so make sure y'all connect with me on social media. Y'all know I really do miss giving y'all the sticky notes. And we do have an after show in full effect this evening. So shout out to all the people who joined the channel. Shout out to everybody who is going to join the channel so that we can do our after show for the members only this evening. I want to dig into a couple of other miscellaneous things and happenings uh, within Black media and Black news. But I definitely want to touch on the D.L. Hughley situation and bring a question to the forefront. And I'm going to talk a little more about that. But y'all know, I always shout out and show love to my channel members and to my channel members and to my Patreon members, because there are quite a few of you over there as well. Thank you so much. So what I'll do is I need to take another sip of water because I'm overexerting my voice box because it's been a minute. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a sip of water, say thank you to all of my channel members. Y'all, please drop some pancakes in the chat. Um, make sure you use these special emojis if you are a channel member or if you take this time to join. Thank you. And I'll see you in the after show. So let's go ahead and play this. Then I'm going to get into the sticky note. Then we're going to get out of here. And listen, drop some pancakes and hit thumbs up. All right. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me <laughs> some black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? So wait a minute, you ain't joined the channel yet so that you can access special perks over here with the Planet Jane? Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain Jane. Ooh, watch this. Hey, I'm the Planet Jane. I'm a cultural commentator and informant, and I provide sticky coverage on trending stories, black news, black culture, and everyday topics with a sticky abstract perspective. <laughs> so get familiar with the perks. I've carefully curated all of these things and it's just a little exclusive glaze to amplify the way that you express yourself. <laughs> so get comfortable, get used to our official emoji over here that is the pancake stack because it's always sticky in Hollywood and in real life and especially when you spend the time over here with the plainest Jane. Like I said, I hope you enjoy the exclusive glaze that I've provided for you to amplify the way you express yourself and I hope you enjoy the digital vibe. 
Hey, listen, I always want you to keep it sticky, but be sure to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. But most importantly, I hope that you're feeling all right, and hopefully you've had some time to tackle some of your invisible problems. I know I got a couple of new subscribers, and I just want to say thank y'all. I really do appreciate you. And if you're not quite feeling all right, this channel right here, once you join, it's quite help you kick back and decompress always, but it'll also keep you in the know with what's happening with the best black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So again, get comfortable. The first drink is on me, all right? Act like you got some sense, and I'll see you around. But don't forget to keep it sticky 24-7 by following me on Instagram, but hit that notification bell so that you always know when I upload and you get your dose of syrup first. Now, with all that stickiness being said, the most important thing I want you to remember about this neck of the woods and the plainest Jane is Black Lives Matter. And if you don't agree, buy pumpkin, buy pumpkin. That will take you out. I don't play that shit. Now you gotta go for real. It's just that simple. Hey, look, whether you join or not, I do want you to stay beautiful, black, and blessed. And just know I appreciate your support. I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? All right now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. Hey, shout out to Tay Tay for joining the channel membership. I appreciate you. Tay Tay is a member over here and on Patreon. I've got like five channel members who are members here and have also joined my Patreon. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. So I want to get into this sticky note, right? And y'all know that the sticky note is really just the most important thing that I want to leave y'all with for the day. Okay. And today's sticky note is this. Misery will always be offended by confidence and a wealth of excitement. <laughs> Misery loves company. So if you are coming around too happy, too pumped up, too successful around misery, they're going to be offended by that. Don't ever make yourself small. I would never recommend you shrink yourself to conform to someone else's level of comfortability, but do take note on the company and rooms in which you'll have the best experience spreading your wings and flourishing as your full self. Everyone will not be happy for you when you are growing exponentially or you are reaching new levels. So again, don't make yourself small, but don't run to those people and expect for them to cheerlead and be happy for you. And sometimes it is important to keep your future plans and what you got going on in the new levels you are making it to. It's important to keep that to yourself because it is more protected, it's more sacred that way. Sometimes you be sharing shit with people who you think are really happy for you, who are rooting for you, and really they want you to fail. And you'll find yourself with all these detours and you have no clue where these detours came from or how they got there. And you have to do inventory. Who did I share this good news with that would really want to not see me achieve what I set out to? And sometimes it's better to keep your future endeavors and your successful aspirations to your goddamn self because everybody is not happy for you. Everybody doesn't want to see you level up. And so I recommend like, listen, don't ever let anyone project their insecurities onto you. Don't ever let them do that. Some people and some environments would rather set you back and see you small because it makes them feel better about their mediocrity. Don't allow those complacent things and complacent people to set limitations for you. Because again, misery will always be offended by confidence and a wealth of excitement. I right? Now, if you caught that message and it resonated with you, be sure to comment down below, I'm doing me. <laughs> so that I know it's real. This is something that really takes some time to learn. You know what I mean? And it's not like you want to brag. Sometimes you're so excited. It's like, who was around me? Who can I tell this good news to? Oh my God, I just got this call I've been waiting for. Or this door just opened for me. Or I just got this opportunity. Stop telling everybody. Don't shrink yourself, but stop sharing it with everyone. You can't protect those things if you're oversharing those things with people under the guise of supporters, but they're really 
undercover haters. So it's important that you scope out the environments in which you will have the best experience in spreading your wings and flourishing as your full self so that you know where you can be comfortable. If everybody in the room wants to cut your wings off when you're trying to fly, you should probably try to find a room that is actually going to applaud you and be happy for you. Otherwise, you're spreading your wings and you're sharing some shit about yourself that other people are excited to tear down and to stop you from. So listen, it takes some time to learn that balance. Again, it's not about, you know, bragging or feeling like, oh, I can't share my positive stuff. No, take note of who and where to place value in sharing some of the things that are going on in your life and the things that you plan on taking. Okay. I've been gone for a while. So that's a long one, but listen, I really felt that, and that one came out the other day. Um, it's also on the community tab. If you want to see a shorter version of that sticky note, be sure to check it out on the community tab. Sometimes uh, the sticky notes that I give you, sometimes they are already on the community tab, and sometimes they haven't made it to the community tab, and it's going to be there in the morning, and you get it early if you're watching the video. So y'all know the sticky notes is one of my mini signatures for my format and the way in which I be pumping out this syrup. I be keeping it sticky, giving y'all the syrup. Y'all know how Baltimore do. Baltimore stand up. OK, <laughs> but listen, I appreciate y'all. Your support is so unmatched. I didn't ask for um, any of you to defend me with whatever's going on out here, but a great amount of you did. And I appreciate that. Um, you know, if you just got quiet because that's more your style, I appreciate that. You're still supporting. A lot of you rejoined. A lot of you reached out on Twitter, on Instagram. Hell, some of you emailed me and. I'm grateful. And, and I needed that. So thank you so much. I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate y'all supporting and spending your time and your energy. Let me know your thoughts on the topic that we discussed today, which is Kanye West and his scattered brain ass. Check out the videos. It would mean so much for me. All right. Check out them videos. Put it on your laptop. Put it on your iPad. Go do some, Just let the video play, even if you've watched it already. Um, because the deep dive that I did earlier today, that 18 minute video, it was really good. And I had, um, it was really fulfilling to me to provide the historical context on a word that honestly, as a black community, we use loosely, right? But again, when you think about a raccoon, no RA, we start thinking about a sellout. We start thinking about a Terry Crews. We start thinking about a Stacey Dash. We start thinking about Samuel L. Jackson off Django. We start thinking about Uncle Ruckus off of uh, the Boondocks. But that term has really transformed from its origin, which was very anti-Black when it started. And I had a good time really doing that deep dive and creating that video that I released earlier today, I think around like one o'clock. Um, so thanks to all the channel members. We will definitely, thank you for all the love. I see so much love in the comments and a lot of people saying I'm doing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I look forward to doing the after show. Um, with you all. Um, like I said, there's some miscellaneous things. If there's other stuff that y'all been seeing going on, y'all know I got some things to say about Juicy Smollier. Um, But I definitely want to get into backstage on the membership and the link, if you want to join, it is pinned to the top of the chat box. And it's also the very first link down below in the description box. Kanye West versus D.O. Hughley, right? D.O. Hughley, a lot of his skeletons, a lot of his old, not so positive press, all that came flying out the closet the other day when Kanye took aim at D.L. Hughley. And I want to unpack that a little bit. And the real question that I have is, do you think that D.L. Hughley really has or should have um, a voice against Kanye West after the abuse and all of um, D.L. Hughley's... Uh, there's some really uncomfortable stuff in D.L. Hughley's past. So I want to get into all that stuff. It's pretty... Um, sensitive subject matter. I might come out and do it on a public tip for everybody, but for now, that's something that we are going to be saving for backstage, along with whatever else you all would like to talk about when I drop the link and we get back there and we let loose on a backstage sticky bus like we used to do, like we always do, okay? So listen, make sure you join the channel membership for the after show. Make sure you get caught up on all of the Kanye rants from March the 13th. It is linked down below in the description box um, under part one, right? So this five minute video that we were able to watch today was actually one of the five rants he uploaded on March the 13th. 
So those four are in that video. This one is in this one. If the channel members want to just see the five minute video, no interruptions, no commentary, I think I'll upload that on members only so that you don't have to keep like skipping through. And I'll just go ahead and do that tonight um, so that you all are able to grab a hold of that. But listen, I've had an amazing time kicking it with y'all this evening. Y'all know I always get hungry. What time is it? It's 10 21. Your girl is hungry. Okay. And as you can tell, I've been eating good in the neighborhood. You hear me? Happy women eat. <laughs> and my face is round. I just knew I was going to come back and y'all were going to call me fat, but that's okay, baby. That's okay. Make sure y'all dig around in the description box. There's a lot of really good juicy stuff there. No smolier, but there is some juicy stuff down there and listen don't forget to check in on yourself find some peace do some things to grant yourself some release and hold on to your loved ones all right make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down either way i appreciate it but be sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of this sir because y'all know things are always sticky in hollywood and in real life y'all be sure to drop one of them pancake emojis and y'all stay beautiful black and blessed until the next time all right but that's it if you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen or i'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video i'll see you there